Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about the top five things you can do to increase your workflow speed with Inside Redshift. Now these tips are gonna be geared towards getting you moving quicker with Inside Redshift. So that means seeing your previews quicker, getting your textures loaded up quicker, all the little things you can do to increase the speed while you're actually working. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. All right, so coming in at number five, freeze tessellation and freeze geometry updates. Now, if you've ever worked with displacement in Redshift, you know it's incredibly slow. It can be incredibly slow. In this situation, it is. So I have a very dense mesh here, right? And on this mesh, I'm going to apply a displacement to it. Now, as soon as I do this, it's going to go through and it's going to have to do a lot of calculations, right? It's going to think about what it has to do um, and it's ultimately going to give us our image. Now, this is just a random displacement that I put on here to demonstrate, but watch what happens when we start to move the camera. Now, when we start to move the camera, it gets really slow. Nothing happens. We don't get updates and it has to prepare these meshes every single time. So the way to fix this is to simply click the freeze tessellation button. And what this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, you like this displacement, you like the tessellation, you like how it looks. And I don't need to think about that anymore. So now when I move the camera, it's just going to give me almost instantaneous updates, right? It's not going to have to go through that process of thinking <laughs> every time. Um, so that is part of trick number five. Now, the second part of trick number five is freeze geometry updates. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this displacement for the mask, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and keep freeze tessellation on and let's go ahead and freeze geometry updates. All right, now you see I have a sphere here, but right now I have it turned off. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. Now when I turn it on, you see nothing happens. It doesn't actually come on to the screen. It doesn't render, nothing happens with that. And it's not going to until I unclick this button. As soon as I unclick this button, then Redshift is gonna say, okay, let me look to see if there's any new geometry. But that's not all it does. It also looks at just your general form or shape of the geometry, your points and your mess positions, um, and to see if anything's changed. So let's go ahead and let's freeze it again, and let's just move this out. You see, as we move this out, it doesn't actually reflect that the geometry's changed. Now, this can be time-saving because it's not actually having to make updates all the time of new geometry and again, recalculations. And of course, I'm working with a sphere here, so it's pretty uh, simple shape. But once you get really dense meshes, this can be a big time-saver. Okay, moving on to number four, turn off material previews. This is huge in saving time in your workflow. Now, it's pretty simple to do. All you need to do is go to Edit, preferences, go to your render redshift settings, go to material previews and just switch these to off. Now what this is gonna do, you see that we have a preview here and what's gonna happen is when I turn this off, anytime I make a change to this material now, it's not gonna try to update it. So you'll see everything's just black, okay? So if I come in here to my base color and I go to my color and I change this to really anything, you're gonna see it just disappears because it just tried to update and basically Redshift said, no, you're not gonna update that. Now, why is this so important? Well, it's so important because it's very, very, very slow sometimes to update these previews and I'll show you why. I'm gonna go back to what we had here and I'm gonna to go to edit preferences and I'm gonna turn back on the material previews, okay? So when I turn this on in my node shader here, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna make a change, just any change, and it's gonna go through everything and try to figure that out, right? It's gonna go through everything and try to actually uh, calculate what's happening with that. And where this becomes a problem is it tries to go through every single node and look at that node and try to update it. And that becomes cumbersome and time consuming when you do that. All right, so you can turn those off and see now it just caught up. It just caught up of actually updating everything. So every time you make a change, it goes through like all this stuff and it, it takes a ton of time. Now, you also have control to turn these off individually. So if you wanna do that, what you can do, just hit this little button right here and basically that's gonna turn off the preview just for that node, right? Just for this node because it's treating this almost just like its own individual material, which it is, and then we get our final output, right? So that's great. Um, if you are currently working in the shader graph, what you can do, now if, if everything's turned off, it's not a big deal, but let's just say you just wanted the shader graph turned off. You can go to view, material preview, and just say off. And if you turn it off, it's no longer gonna try to preview um, 
in the in the uh, the side panels here. So it's not going to preview over here or preview over here, and that's going to save you time. All right, coming in at number three is turn off texture refresh. Now this honestly could be number one. That's how cumbersome this option can be. It is so much faster when you turn this off. Now, to my knowledge, this is only an issue inside the shader graph, and I'm gonna show you. So when I come in here to my shader graph, I'm already clicking and it is slow as hell. I mean, it's slow. I'm trying to like move and drag and it's just slow. It's like, you can see, it's just, everything takes time, right? As I do this, it just takes time. There's a lag. Everything is just, everything is awful, right? <laughs> everything is terrible right now. Um, so how do we fix this, right? So up here, if you go to options and turn off auto refresh texture files, okay? Now, what this is gonna do, it's gonna stop trying to see if this was updated essentially. It's gonna stop looking at this texture and just not really care if it is. And you're gonna see it's much, much faster now when I click on it, I can actually move it and I can navigate much faster. Whereas if I turn it off, everything is just so slow. I'm trying to move now, I can't even move, it's so slow. So this honestly could be number one, <laughs> but um, it doesn't, to my knowledge, apply to the shader node. Um, when I go into the nodes, it tends to be much quicker. So this is more of a shader graph issue, at least in my experiences. So I couldn't quite put it at number one. But if you're using shader graph materials, this could be the number one. Okay, coming in at number two is your IPR undersampling. Now, once again, another massive technical term that is very annoying, I know, but it's gonna save you a ton of time and you're gonna actually be able to work and work faster. All right, what I've done is I've set my output to be 8K, so something that's very, very high. Um, my settings right now are actually to low, right? Because I wanted to just demonstrate that when you're at 8K, um things are going to go slow it's just natural how it is what i'm going to do is i'm going to move around here you're going to see the update's going to take basically forever so it's going to take forever it's going to sit here it's going to think about what it's doing Ugh, it's no fun all right how do we fix this this is number two because once again this lesson is about using Redshift and how to make Redshift work faster while you are using it. So let's go and let's turn down our IPR under sampling, or I guess you could look at it as turning it up. Right now it's set to zero. Now IPR under sampling is basically how much effort it gives to the first few passes of your progressive render, right? How much effort is it gonna to try to put in there? So right now it's putting in maximum effort. It's gonna to try to make it as nice as it can as you zoom around, right? Let's put it to five. You're gonna see instantly, it gets really chunky, but I can move. I can actually move and I can kind of understand what's happening as I do this. So as I move, again, really chunky, but then as it settles in, it's gonna get better and better and better. So again, it's only for your first few passes that the progressive render is trying to do that it's gonna basically look like crap, but you can actually move, right? Whereas before, if I go to my preferences and I set it to zero, I can't even really move and see it. Like, I don't really know what's happening here. Again, it's still waiting and doing whatever it's doing, which is, well, not fun for anyone, right? So that is why this is number two, because this is gonna just get you moving. It's gonna get the show on the road. Okay, and coming in at number one is fixed scaling with inside your IPR. Now, if you've never heard of fixed scaling, boy, am I happy to show you this. So. What fixed scaling is, is basically it's a way inside Redshift to tell the preview window to reduce the size of the outputs, okay? So what does that mean, all right? So under here we have a bunch of different things, original size, fixed scaling, fit window, fill window. I cover this in a completely different lesson when I show you everything. For now, we're just concerned about fixed scaling, okay? So we have two different percentages here. We have um, a left side and a right side. And basically what the left side is, it's a zoom feature. So if you can imagine uh, being in Photoshop or After Effects and you just take that zoom tool and you zoom in uh, to your comp or to your, your image, right? That's essentially what this is. It's just a zoom tool, all right? This one on the right is actually the size of the comp, right? So it's, it's the width and the height. Okay, now what does that mean? So that means right now it's at 100%. So it's at 100%, I guess you can imagine quality is kind of how I think of it. So it's actually at 100% 7680 by 432, it's at 8K. Now if I reduce this by half, it will be at 4K. Okay, so if I go to 
50%. Now it's actually at this divided by two. So 3840 by 2860. So this is huge because I'm gonna go back to 100%, okay? And I'm gonna just to demonstrate, put this to 100% and it's it's massive, right? And you see if I zoom out what's happening here, this, this left side is actually reducing, okay? But let's see what happens when I try to move, okay? Once again, takes forever to move, okay? Like you can't really do it, okay? So what you can do though, is I can flip these numbers. I can just go to 20% and 100%, all right? Now let's move around. Now when I move around, I can actually see it and I can see it pretty damn quick. So this is amazing because now you can still get your full quality, if you will, because you might be saying, well, why not just reduce the width and the height um, and then have it be um, your settings? Well, the difference is, is that you're actually able to maintain the quality, right? You're actually able to maintain your threshold quality, whether it's high, medium, or low, whatever your advanced settings are. So you can basically maintain that, but you're just telling it to reduce in size, and therefore you're actually able to work with it, and you're able to, yeah, get to where you need to be. And that is number one, and brings us to the end of this list. And honestly, all five of these could be arguable to be number one, Definitely the last three could be a, a for sure a tie. Now, if you have a favorite trick that you know, please let us know in the comments or tell us on our Instagram page. And that's going to do it for this one. I will see you on the next one.